in honor of the winter and holiday season, we are going to paint some pine trees today. I will walk you through three different styles. The first one will be trees you would see in the distance. The second, a more detailed and up close tree. And the last will be one covered in some fresh snow. You will need your basic watercolor materials. I got all my green watercolors out, but only ended up using the chromium oxide green in a Payne's gray. I'm using Paulina Bright watercolor brushes, 140 pound cold pressed paper, and a clear plastic palette. I am going to mix a little bit of the chromium oxide green and the Payne's gray and we are gonna paint a thin straight line for the trunk of our tree. This will disappear, but it helps direct where we place our branches. So at the very top, I am going to start adding my branches to the trunk. I am applying more pressure on my brush when it is the closest to the trunk. As I move outward on my branch, I am lightly touching the paper with my paintbrush, so you'll notice the branches go from thick to thin. And these trees are more often to the distance, so we're getting more of kind of a silhouette, so they do not need to be perfect. We are not painting the little details of trees, so loosen your grip on your paintbrush, relax your fingers, and allow some movement with your brush. I decided to add a few trees in the background and the trees that are going to be the closest to you will be the darkest. So for the trees in the background, I went a little lighter and which I just added more water and a little bit less paint. This helps create more depth and it almost looks like fog or mist, which can add some moodiness to your painting as well. Next up, we have a more detailed and realistic looking tree. You will start at the top again, and this time we are not gonna do a line. Instead, we are going to do some small bunches of branches, and we're not gonna really connect them like we did the last time. We are going to leave some gaps in between. We are going to come back in with a medium green and an even darker shade to create some shadows and depth. For the light green, I used a greater ratio of water than my paint, and for the medium green, I used more paint and a little less water, and for the dark green, I mixed my chromium oxide green and a Payne's gray. Notice my branches get a little bit longer and the bunches get a little bit thicker and more full down at the bottom of my tree. I am now going to come in with that medium green color and I'm going to start kind of connecting those light colored bunches of branches together. It is important to leave those light green branches visible so make sure your medium and dark colors don't mix or cover them up. When we add our really dark green, you will notice that having that contrast between the really dark branches and light branches are really gonna give our tree some depth. I am now coming in with that dark green and adding it more towards the center of our tree, kind of towards the trunk. That's where we're gonna get the most shadows. I also added a nice little shadow underneath our tree with the Payne's gray color to ground it. This last snowy tree is pretty magical. We are going to create a snowy look without using the color white. It seems a little crazy, but stick with me. Again, you will start at the top using a mix of green and gray, and you will start to create some branches. These are gonna be very loose and not super detailed like our last tree, and we're gonna leave some gaps in between our bunches of branches because we are going to come back in with a clean and slightly damp brush to create our snow. 
you are going to lightly brush right above the branches. You will notice the brush will pull in a very small amount of that gray and create the illusion of snow. My brush is damp. It really isn't pooling water onto my tree. It really is just being used to blend or kind of soften those branches. And while this layer of snow is still kind of wet, I'm gonna come back in with my Payne's Gray to add a little bit of a shadow underneath that layer of snow. I then added a few more branches before coming back in to create that snow again. Just remember that trees come in all shapes and sizes, so just have fun with this and enjoy the process. They do not need to be perfect. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and are inspired to paint some more trees this season. Thank you for painting with me.